Allah, most gracious, most merciful. All praises due to Allah. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon his Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu his household, his companions, and whoever follows him. We ask Allah at the beginning of this gathering to make our gathering a blessed one. And when we disperse, we disperse protected and not to let anyone among us miserable or prevented from Allah's mercy. Allah is able to respond. Tonight, inshallah, we will talk about a great honorable companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He set an, a great example looking for the truth. He went from a master to a master, from a phase to a phase, and he lived a life full of moving around, looking uh, for the truth and seeking it until he reached to the Medina of the Prophet ﷺ. Then he became very comfortable meeting with Rasulullah ﷺ and his life became pure and better. And Rasulullah ﷺ raised him to the rank of household when some people started talking about his ethnicity. He, oh, he's a Persian, he is not, for, he's not an Arab, he's not a Meccan. Rasulullah Sallallahu said, Salman is from our family and household. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon the Prophet and may Allah be pleased with all his companions. Tonight we will go with this great companion. But I wanted to introduce first a few things of wisdom before we talk. They said one story, there was a poor person proposed to a girl for marriage and they refused. Then a rich man, he proposed, but he was not praying, he was not fasting, he did not know the, uh, he did not do any of the worship. So they agreed and they said, may Allah guide him. So why? Why did not say about the first one, may Allah give him rizq? But they said about the second one, may Allah guide him. Why they remembered Allah, the one who guides, but they forgot the attribute of Allah who provide. Why they did not say about the first one that Allah will give him rizq? Another issue, they said, when a person, he asks us, for money, we look to the least bill and give it to him, but we ask Allah to give us the highest paradise. So you want to see the lowest currency and maybe it is torn and maybe it is rusty or it is not good and you look in all your pocket to see the least amount Yet you ask Allah the highest stage in Jannah. So how little is our, how little is what we give and how big is what we seek. Another uh, issue, they said whoever say Salah or Rasulullah Sallallahu one time, Allah, Allah give him ten times. May Allah's peace and blessing be upon him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they said there is no single salah on the Prophet ﷺ and his household. It goes to the heaven except it brings down ten. So it is amazing how a person becomes miser for himself. You know that you're going to get ten, but you don't want to give one. And Allah is the rich and we are the poor. Among also the good <coughs> sayings that the prayer makes you more in control of your emotions and more in control of your reactions. They said, the Quran says that about Salah. Quran says, truly a human being is created unstable. Whenever touched by evil, he reacts negatively. And when he is touched by goodness, he becomes miser. So when something bad happens to him, uh, he 
reacts negatively and unstable and the wind giving goodness he uh, does not give away except to those who pray that means prayer will not bring that result but will bring the opposite of goodness will bring the opposite of that to goodness so salah surely uh, changes the behavior among the beautiful words also one wise man was asked why we see the sky clear it's beautiful and bright he said because humans don't live there <laughs> it is beautiful because no humans live up there and if a person he goes to a long life and he he live a long life so he lives in it and he purif he make the pure impure it's not like that but a poet put it like that and he said that we pollute life around us so one time a poet he was making a eulogy for a writer so someone who wrote books and all that he died so one poetry poet he wrote a poetry he said that you know everybody is sorrowful for you he said that's why the ink is black out of sorrow and all the pens they were carved so uh, this one also saying that the sky is bright because humans are not there he said person he lived until he's 120 years old and he is healthy and he lived in the desert so he was asked why this age you are that active he said he said i abandoned envy so my body can continue to become strong because envy and destroys the envious person so they said that hasad or envy is a very just a disease because it starts with the per the host the person who has it it's like fire it's itself away if it doesn't find anything to burn they used to say the first uh, the first crime committed on earth between the two sons of adam was because of hasad envy he killed his brother because of envy that it was accepted from him and the story in surah al-maida how the two brothers were uh, conversing with each other about it so after this few uh, words of wisdom then we come to our uh, lesson salman al-farisi may allah uh, may allah be pleased with him we'll let him talk to us about his life he uh, looking for truth and it was narrated with uh, authentic uh, narrations he said I was from Asbahan and I was one of the villages and my father was the mayor of that town and I was the dearest to my father and my father was attached to me so much and he loved me so much that he kept me uh, to uh, in that room of the fire they used to worship the fire so he said kept me like a girl in the house so to serve the fire so i was to become the person who keep the fire going so the fire has to keep continuing it does not go down does not sit off so he makes a man the one who makes sure that the fire is going on all the time and my father had he says my father had a huge uh, 
meadow and a garden. So one day he was busy with building something. So he told me, oh, my son, I am uh, busy with b that building. So go in the garden and do few things. So he gave him few tasks to take care of. To take care of the pasture. So he said, I went to... I went to uh, see what my father told me, but my heart was so attached to truth. So I passed by one of the churches of the Christians, and I heard them praying. And I don't know. I am imprisoned in the house, and my father is attached to me, and he doesn't want to, me, to get me out. So I'm practically a prisoner, so I don't know what is happening when I heard the voices of those Christians inside the church while they're praying and I don't know why, what did they do because my father was uh, keeping me at the house so when I passed by them I, when I heard their voices I entered their church to see what they do so when I saw, saw, saw them I liked the prayer and I desired what they do so I said this is better than the religion that I'm following So I did not leave them until the sun set and I left the garden and I did not do the task that my father assigned and I stayed with those Christians in their uh, church until the sun set. I told them where is the origin of this religion? Where is the original source of this? And they said it is in Shem where Syria is. So I went uh, back to my father and the, he was busy and distracted uh, because I did not come so everybody was looking for me. I make him busy, distracted from all. Didn't I tell you to do such and such? <coughs> his father said. So I said I went to the church and I continued with them until the sunset. So he said, this is not good religion. Your religion and your parents' religion is better than all of that. He said, no, it is better than ours. I am not convinced. It is better than our religion. So he said he was scared. This time he tied me from my leg so he make uh, he ch shackled me in the house. So I sent to those Christians. So he said that if somebody come from a sham, uh, please tell me if a group comes from there. Please tell me because he wants to go there. So when a caravan came, they sent it to him and they told him. So I told them, when they finish everything and they are about to go back to their home, so tell, let me know. Let me know when they are leaving back home. So when they are about to leave, they told me. So I managed to unchain myself and I went with them, eloped. And I went to Sham with them. So he is going away to the unknown to look for the truth. Nobody is uh, waiting for him. No house, no car, nobody receiving him. Nobody. No, He just wants Allah's mercy and he looks for the truth. So you don't forget, Allah Azza wa Jalla said, those who strive in our cause, we will guide them to our path. Truly Allah is with the people of Ihsan, people of goodness. So he says, I went with them until Hashem. Now I arrived there. He said, who is the best of this religion? Best person in that religion. So they said, this uh, priest in that church. So I went to him and I told him, I desire this religion and I like to be your follower serve you in your church and I learn from you and I will pray with you he said I come with me and I entered with him he said he was a very bad man he said he was a very bad man he said that 
he tells the people about charity and when they gather all of this he takes it to himself he makes a fundraising he gather everything and he takes it and he does not give uh, to the poor people so he gathered seven big containers of uh, silver and gold so I hated him so much because I see how he advised people but he does himself what he does himself he said when he died so he did not want to hide all of this in his chest so the church people gathered to bury this man S so I told them I was the closest to him and he was the worst person and he ordered you with all these good things he doesn't do and he took all your money and he did not give any poor people he said how do you know who told you what is the proof I will tell you where is his treasure so I showed him the treasure so they took the seven huge containers of gold and the silver they said we will not bury him they crucified him and they stoned him with this Allah says oh you who believe many of those priests and the religious leaders of the people of the book they eat the money of the people without right and they prevent people from the path of Allah they brought another person they brought a new person so I found that he is the complete opposite he was the best he was praying all day and night and I loved him so much uh, a love that I did not love anyone else I lived with him for a long time then when he was about to die I told him I was with you and I loved you so much that I did not love anyone like this before now I see you are about to you are about to die so where do you advise me to go and what you order me to do he said oh my son I don't know anyone that who live like I used to and follow the religion like I do anywhere in the world except such and such person in Mosul in Iraq so he is like me and he knows what I know so go there so he said when he died and I we buried him so I went to Iraq to Mosul and I told him such and such person told me to come here and follow you and he said that you are the one knowledgeable like him so he said stay with me so I found him also a very good person like that friend so also he, he about to die so I did the same thing I told him I came to here based on the reference of your friend and now you see what you are going so where you advise me to go he said I know my son I don't know anyone uh, like on the same way except a person in Sibin which is in Turkey uh, Mardin so he died and we buried him then I went to that person so I told him the same thing and what uh, that priest told him so he said stay with me so so he was a good man uh, and I stayed with the best person so again he was about to die so I told him same exact thing I don't want to stop being with good people so where you ask me to go now I he told me I don't know anybody in anywhere except a person in Amoria so go to him so I went uh, the same thing I told him the same thing so he said stay with me he's a good man too so he said now I started working and I have few cows and 
uh, sheep. Then he was about to die. Uh, so I told him the same thing. Uh, I told him that I went from this person to this person to this person until I came here to you. And now I'm asking you the same thing. What I know that I don't think anybody else, Mar nobody. We were the last few people. So he said, what's the solution? But this is the time that the last prophet will come. He will come with the religion of Ibrahim, and he will come in the land of Arabs, and he will migrate between two lava rocks land and he will take from the gift but he will not eat from the charity and the, between his shoulders there is the seal of prophethood if you can reach there then go because this is the one that you need to be with when he died and he was buried I stayed in that city Amoreya then some people from the tribe of Caleb going to the land of Arabs, he said, I give you my sheep and my cows, take everything, but take me to, to that land. They said, okay. So I give everything to them. So they took me, when they came to Wad al-Qura, they transgressed me, and they sold me to a Jew as a slave. They took the cows, they took the sheep, and they enslaved him himself. So I went and I saw the palm trees, but I don't know if it is the land or not. So I wished that uh, I wish that this is the land that my teacher was telling me. So that Jew uh, sold me to his cousin from the tribe of Bani Quraiza, which lived in Medina. So he took me to Medina. So once I entered, I knew that this is the city. Then Allah sent his messenger. Then he stay, he's in Mecca. I don't hear anything about in Medina except I'm a slave. That's why I didn't hear what happens to him in Mecca. But when he migrated, and I am working in the field for my Jewish master while he's sitting. So, Ausan and Khazraj, those uh, two tribes, they were fighting together, but now they are together. <coughs> so, the Jewish master, he had a friend telling him that uh, this person arrived, that that uh, prophet came and all of that. Then when I heard that, that's what I'm waiting for. I start shivering and shaking. I thought that I will pass out. So I was above the palm tree. Then I came down and I'm telling his cousin, what do you say? What do you say? So my master was afraid why I'm talking to him. And he punched me. He said, it's not your business. Go do your business with the palm trees. Go work. Mind your business. I said, no. I just wanted to know. I, I said, I'm just saying what is happening. Then I asked my... Then I asked my, the wife of my master. I told her, give me one day off, please. She said, okay. So I went out. So I collected some wood and I sold it. And I bought some food. Then I came to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu while he's in Quba, just arrived. And I, I came, I told him, I was told that you are a uh, good pious man and this is uh, and you have good people around you as companions so I, I have this of a charity uh, so eat from it so Rasulullah said 
to his uh, companions eat from it, but he didn't eat. So I said, this is one sign. My, mas my priest teacher told me that this is one. He said he doesn't eat from charity. Then I left. Then I collected uh, other money. Then he went to Medina. I went next time. I told him, I saw that you don't eat charity and this is a gift from me to you uh, to honor you. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi ate from it and he ordered his companions to eat from it. So I said, this is the second sign that he ate from the gift. Then I came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Salman says, while he was in Baqiyah, following following one of the funerals of his companions, while he was covered by two pieces of clothes, then I looked behind his behind him to see the seal of the prophethood between his shoulders. When Rasulullah Sallallahu saw him, he saw me, he wanted to, so he uncovered his shoulder. He knew what he is looking for, so I found that it's the seal of the prophethood. So and then I started kissing him and I cried. So Rasulullah son, come here, he told me come here. Come to my face here. Then I came him. Then I told him the whole story like he was telling Abdullah ibn Abbas. So uh, Rasulullah he was amazed. Uh, and he liked it that his companions listened to it. And then Salman was still a slave. He did not fight with Rasulullah and Badr or and Uhud because he is a slave. The Rasulullah told uh, me, Salman said, so I told him, Ya Salman, go agree with your master to free you for some money. Make a deal with your master, tell him that uh, free me for this much and we'll help you. So I went, uh, so he said, he said that, you know, I'll, that I will plant uh, in his garden 300 date palm trees and all of them good and I give him 40 uh, ounces of gold then I become free so Rasulullah said to his companions help your brother so they they help him with the palm trees so one person will bring 20 one person will bring 30 one person will bring 10 15 until he got uh, 300 uh, little plants of the palm tree so Rasulullah said Rasulullah said go and make the holes for it he said when you finish tell me to come to put it on with my own hand you just go and dig the holes and I will plant them for you. Rasulullah Sallallahu himself. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said, I went and uh, my f friend companions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we went and dig the holes and I came and told Rasulullah Sallallahu So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi himself, he went with me. <coughs> so he said, hand it to me. So each one gave me... Uh, they gave Rasulullah and Rasulullah put it with his own hand in the holes. He said, by, the, by Allah, there was no one, no single one died. Everything Rasulullah put, all of it was growing double. So now I give the first half of the deal. So it's still money, 40 uh, ways of gold. So Rasulullah Rasulullah brought something which is like an egg of gold. He said, what the Persian do? So he brought me, Salman. He said, take this and give to the master. He said, Ya Rasulullah. He said, what is this? This is a little thing. And I have 40 ways of gold. This is nothing. So he said, Rasulullah said, 
take it uh, take it and give it to him Allah Azza wa Jalla will make him agree take it just give it to him so I give it he said by Allah Azza wa Jalla the one in whose hands is my soul he said I, I kept weighing it piece by piece I cut it piece by piece until I give all what they want so I went to the Rasulullah fought with him in the battle of the trench and I stayed with him for, uh, for the rest of his life this is a very amazing story for uh, looking for the truth about Uthman al-Nahdi one of the tabi'een he said he said that uh, Salman was the slave of he said 17 masters until I reach Rasulullah sallallahu among the manifestation of the loving of Allah to his companions Aeth ibn Amr he said Salman, Suhaib and the Bilal they were sitting among some people uh, gathering Abu Sufyan before Abu Sufyan became a Muslim after the treaty of Hudaybiyah they said he said that he said why he's still alive he said the swords of Allah did not do its right from this man Yeah, they were saying about how they were tortured before. So Abu Bakr radiallahu was sitting and he, he told him, you're saying this about the leader of Quraysh. And then he come to Rasulullah sallallahu and he told him about what they said. Rasulullah sallallahu said to Abu Bakr, maybe you anger them. If you anger them, you angered Allah Azza wa Jal. You make them angry. If you make them angry, you make Allah angry. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu went and he said, oh my brothers, did I anger you? They said, no, you did not anger us. May Allah forgive you. And this is a great honor for Salman, Bilal and Suhaib uh, to see how Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi honor uh, the weak people and the people of religion uh, oh Allah guide us to the straight path listen to this uh, beautiful reflection Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu said when Salman was dying he, he lived 80 years there are weak narrations saying more than that but he lived 80 years when he was about to die Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas was visiting him and Sa'ad saw Salman crying I told him oh my brother why you are, are you crying didn't you accompany Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't you didn't you and if a person dies it's some of the sunnah people should you know say good good things that he did until he become tranquil and comfortable and he he wants to meet Allah so Allah loves to meet him so Salman said I am I am not crying because I hit the hereafter or because I regret something in this world <coughs> I'm not uh, crying because of leaving the dunya or I'm going to Akhirah I am because Rasulullah Sallallahu he he uh, agreed with me on something Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam assigned me with something and I don't think I fulfilled he said what did he assign you what he entrust you with he said he, he told me it is enough for me in the dunya that the provision of a traveler 
and I see that I transgressed. I took more than what the Prophet told me. All around him, around him, all the things that he transgressed, that he feel that he transgressed and trespassed and went more in the dunya. He said, only I looked around him, I saw him that uh, a container to wash his clothes in and another container to put food in and a third container that he make wudu and ghusl in. So Sa'ad told him, Oh Abu Abdullah, so you advise us, you are going to Allah, so advise us. So give us wasiya. What would you advise us to follow? He, so he told him, Always remember Allah when you are worried or about to do something and when you judge among people and when you are dividing among people. Remember Allah. If you are about to do something, remember Allah. Mention his name so only to please him. And when you are judge or rule among people, Remember Allah and mention his name and when you are dividing something among people Preserve Allah he will preserve you May Allah be pleased with the companions of Rasulullah Sallallahu May Allah gather us with them O oh Allah fix our religion which is our protection Fix our world where we live Fix our hereafter where we are going Make this life an increase of goodness for us and the death a comfort for us from all evil and take our lives while you are pleased with us. And may Allah's peace and blessings be upon his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.